Hello and welcome to episode 16 of the Insider's Guide to Project Cars 2 where today we are going to take a look at the next screen in the edit tuning setup menu and that is the dampers tab. Now we're going to load up the default stable setup that comes with the BMW M6 GT3 as we have done in the previous videos covering the edit, edit tuning setup screens. And we're going to go into the dampers tab and go through the various options that you can see here. Now initially this seems like a lot to take in but actually there isn't all that much uh, here because basically the screen is broken down to represent the four corners of the car. So we've got the front left, the rear left, the front right, the rear right. And then the center column here uh, is basically the damper ratios for a third spring. Now the BMW M6 GT3 car doesn't have a third spring. Uh, a lot of cars in Project Cars 2 doesn't. It's generally the high downforce cars. So the LMP1, the LMP2s, LMP3 cars, uh, the high end open wheelers. Generally they will have a third spring and if you are able to adjust that then you'll be able to adjust the damper ratios for that third spring in this center column here. But with the GT3 cars obviously they don't have it so we're just going to be focusing on basically one section and the same sort of uh, stuff applies uh, across to the other four, other three corners of the car or should I say all four corners of the car. There are some differences when it comes to front and rear. Uh, we'll go through those as we go through the various sections but generally this should be relatively easy to take in and broken down into a number of different sections just to make it a little bit more understandable for you guys. So we're going to start off with the first option at the top here which is the bump stop and the bump stop is essentially a rubber block that sits on as part of the suspension and what it's designed to do is prevent the car from bottoming out onto the surface of the track but it's also designed to prevent your suspension uh, from metal upon metal contact whether that's with the suspension uh, between the suspension and the chassis or the suspension and the axle. Now obviously as you're driving around the circuit and the suspension is absorbing bumps uh, there's obviously a possibility that there will be metal upon metal contact or alternatively there might be a possibility that you end up bottoming out onto the surface of the track depending on how soft you have your spring rates and also how low you have your car. Obviously if you go and lower the car you're more than you're more likely to bottom out onto the surface of the track. Likewise if you go ahead and soften your spring rates on the suspension tab which we've covered in a previous episode if you go ahead and soften those and also possibly your anti-roll bars you're increasing the chance of uh, basically the car bottoming out with the surface of the track as there's more, there'll be basically more suspension movement. The bump stop is designed uh, to prevent that from happening. What that will do is it will actually take away some of the travel that is allowed within that suspension movement and the uh, amount it will be basically is determined by this value that is set here. Now increasing this amount will mean that the bump stop is bigger, you'll have less suspension travel, you will engage the bump stop sooner, but you're more likely to prevent yourself from bottoming out or uh, potentially damaging your suspension. However, I've never actually damaged my suspension through from taking out bump stops. One of the negatives of increasing the bump stops though is generally it has quite a big negative impact on the overall handling of the car. I find that the bump stops tend to make the car feel quite soft and wallowy uh, whereas decreasing the bump stops or taking them out completely uh, sharpens up the car a lot more and makes it more reactive and it just feels a lot more planted uh, in your hands when going around the track. So generally my rule of thumb is the lower the bump stop the better. Uh, decreasing the value will also obviously make that bump stop smaller but will also actually make the uh, bump stop actually stiffer as well so it'll be more resistant to uh, that suspension movement and compression. It's going to engage a lot, uh, a lot later, it will allow for more suspension travel as well so generally the handling of the car will be sharpened up a lot more. Generally what I tend to do is take the bump stop completely out. If I do start bottoming out an awful lot especially uh, through the corners if you go and uh, bottom the car out through a corner, you're decreasing the uh, the contact patch between uh, the surface of the tyre and also the track surface and obviously that will then take away grip from the car and you're more likely to spin. Usually if you do bottom out quite heavily through a corner, it's going to unsettle the car quite badly and you probably will end up, will end up spinning. Likewise on the straight, if you're bottoming out onto the surface of the track quite a lot, you'll be uh, basically the friction between the surface of the track and the bottom of the car uh, will basically take away the, the 
uh, it will eat away a little bit at the top end speed and it will hamper your acceleration going down that straight. So if you are bottoming out a little bit, it is a pretty good idea to put a little bit of bump stop back in. But generally what I tend to find is running lower, but the, lower the bump stop or no bump stop at all uh, generally tends to work best. Now, coming on to the next section, we've got the slow bump and slow rebound. And we're going to look at these two together because they're kind of, they're in a way uh, linked a little bit. In the same way that fast bump and fast rebound are actually linked as well. Now, the reason why these are linked is mainly because of the words that are used uh, to basically describe this damper ratio. You've got the slow bump and you've got slow rebound. The slow part of both the bump and rebound refer to uh, basically the movement coming from the car through driver input. So that'll be basically the movement uh, when you accelerate, the movement on the suspension uh, from braking and also going through corners. Now bump is the compression movement which means that if you were to jump onto the brakes obviously the car will lurch forward, the front suspension will compress downwards that is your slow bump movement and then as you come off the brakes and the sus suspension extends back to its neutral position that is your slow rebound so the bump is the compression the rebound is the decompression going back to the suspension's neutral state and then obviously the slow part refers to the movement of uh, the car coming from the driver inputs essentially so before I actually get on to which direction you should be adjusting your dampers and how that affects the handling of the car. We'll do an overview of fast bump and fast rebound as the directions in which you change uh, the slow bump, the slow rebound, the fast bump and the fast rebound uh, all work in pretty much the same way and then uh, there is some slight differences from uh, front and rear as well but we'll get onto those in a sec uh, in just a moment so when it comes to the fast bump and the fast rebound Again, the bump and the rebound refer to the same parts that they did with the slow bump and slow rebound. So the bump of the fast part is the uh, obviously the compression of the suspension and then the rebound is the decompression of the suspension and it returning back to its neutral state. But the fast part refers to the suspension movement coming from the uh, impact of curbs and uh, bumps in the road surface. So. Your slow bump and slow rebound is the suspension movement coming from forces above the suspension, so your driver inputs, and then your fast bump and fast rebound are basically the forces coming from below the suspension, so the track surface and curb. So when you go over and hit a large sausage curb, your fast bump allows you to control uh, the suspension movement from absorbing that impact of the curb and obviously the suspension compressing and then the fast rebound is the decompression of the suspension and returning it back to its neutral state after absorbing the impact of hitting that curb. So that's what the slow bump, slow rebound, fast bump and fast rebound do. Now when it comes to adjusting the values of your dampers, increasing them will make them stiffer and react quicker, whereas decreasing them will make them softer and also make the dampers react slower to forces on the suspension. Now when it comes to uh, basically which way to go in terms of aeromechanical grip, it works in the same way as it did with the suspension spring rate. So stiffening your dampers will lean more towards an aero based setup whereas uh, softening your dampers will lean to more towards mechanical grip. Now, if you actually go and, uh, or you have gone and increased your suspension stiffness and made the car stiffer, generally what you'll want to do is actually adjust your dampers with that and actually uh, make your dampers stiffer as well. What it will do at the front of the car is it will make the car uh, more responsive upon initial turning and I have uh, much sharper reactions. However, it can, if you do go too far, lean towards uh, understeer and make the car feel a little bit more snappy at the front end. Likewise, with the rear of the car, if you go and stiffen up the rear dampers, you'll actually tend to find that the car will start to oversteer a lot more, whereas soften it, softening the rear dampers will give you a little bit more understeer, will give you more mechanical grip and it will generally tend to help settle the car down a fair bit more. So 
obviously the help text that is over on the right hand side of the screen helps quite a lot in basically uh, giving you some basically some testing methods as to how to actually uh, go about adjusting your damper ratios uh, when it comes to slow bump and slow rebound uh, obviously you'll want to basically do that based off of driver input if you're finding that the car is uh, either becoming quite heavily understeery uh, or getting snap understeer or snap oversteer then obviously you want to adjust your uh, dampers accordingly likewise if you are going over and attacking curves and you're finding that the car is becoming quite heavily unsettled especially on the rear of the car what you may want to do is increase or should I say uh, stiffen up the front a tiny bit when it comes to the front uh, bump and front rebound but soften up the uh, rear Bump, uh, fast bump and fast rebound and that should settle the rear of the car when going over curbs and uh, basically allow the suspension to actually take the impact from the bumps and curbs in the road surface so take a look at the help text there on the right hand side read it through uh, it'll give you a couple of reasonably good ways as to how about going uh, and adjusting your damper ratios for the slow bump slow rebound the fast bump and the fast rebound and generally if you go and make uh, adjustments to your spring rates you should go and revisit your dampers as well and fine-tune them a little bit more now there are two more options that remain and that is the bump transition and the rebound transition basically what this is is it allows you more finer control uh, between for the bump transition is the uh, transition from slow bump to fast bump or fast bump to slow bump and then rebound is the transition from slow rebound to fast rebound or fast rebound to slow rebound basically it allows you to adjust those rates control how they work and give you much finer control over your dampers generally what you'll tend to find is suspension you tend to sit uh, use that to basically get uh, an overall balance of the car and then you adjust your dampers as basically further fine tuning and refinement of your suspension setup so the damper transition and the rebound transition are basically another layer to your slow bump your slow rebound your fast bump and your fast rebound so it allows you to control those movements a little bit more and basically uh, when that transition moment actually takes place so if you go and increase your bump transition what you'll do is make that transition window longer if you decrease your bump transition uh, you actually make that window shorter and therefore it'll go from your slow bump to your fast bump uh, much quicker likewise with the rebound transition actually uh, adjusting the value increasing it upwards will make the uh, the rebound transition longer whereas decreasing the value will actually make the uh, rebound transition shorter basically what this allows you to do is do some more refined control uh, of basically the the switch between the slow bump and fast bump and what I have found this to be rather useful for is a pretty good example I've had is in uh, at Monza I was driving the BMW M6 GT3 uh, in a league race around there going through Ascari obviously when you go into the Ascari chicane you've got the first left it then goes through a relatively longish uh, right hander before you kind of uh, come out the other side through the uh, left handed kink to exit out of the Ascari chicane what I was finding is going through the long right hander and then into the transition going into that little left handed kink to come out of the chicane basically right at the point that I was uh, turning from right to left and then the car settling there's a bump in the circuit that was actually unsettling the car and uh, I was basically losing control after after a few laps once the kind of the tires the top surface of the tires had worn off and I lost a little bit of grip basically what I was finding is as I was going from that transition from right to left and going through and over that bump the car was becoming rather unsettled and uh, it usually resulted me in spinning what I was able to do with the uh, bump transition the rebound transition rates is actually decrease them to basically make the transition rate shorter so what that meant was when I was going from the right-handed turn and obviously all the weight being on the left 
going into that left-handed turn to come out the exit of uh, Ascari Chicane. And obviously the the weight of the car transitions from the left over onto the right-hand side of the car. And obviously the bump, uh, the slow bump, obviously absorbs that impact. It then comes in and just as the car was getting settled, I was hitting that bump and basically uh, where I was shortening the bump transition, what I was able to do is uh, make it shorter and therefore the slow bump to finish its basically its controlling of the of the dampers of the suspension and making sure that the car was settled so when it come came to actually hitting that bump uh, the fast bump was there ready to basically react like to that bump straight away and make sure that the car was settled what I ended up doing was actually uh, decreasing the uh, the bump and uh, rebound transition rates on the rear of the car that's where I was finding the issue the issue uh, at the front was fine I still had a pretty good grip but the rear of the car was becoming unsettled I was getting quite a lot of oversteer from that bump unless I got the car like properly set up uh, which is quite difficult to do consistently so adjusting that bump transition and the rebound transition I was able to decrease that transition window, make it act quicker so that when it did actually go from that switch from the right into the left and going over that bump, the car was basically, and the suspension was there ready to absorb that impact uh, from the, the uh, track surface. The car was able to take it and the car was a lot more stable. So that is what your bump transition, your rebound transition it basically allows you to do is control when it transfers from the slow bump to the fast bump and also uh, the slow rebound to the fast rebound so it's a little bit of information there to take in hopefully that has given you a bit more of a general understanding understanding of what dampers do like I said earlier in the episode generally what you'll tend to find is you set up your suspension that affects the overall balance of the car and then you come to the dampers to do some more fine tuning of your suspension setup. If you actually go uh, and do some damper adjustment after you've done the suspension adjustment and then you go and adjust your suspension again, it's worth revisiting your dampers to make sure that your damper ratios are good uh, for that suspension change. One thing I would also recommend and I'll actually link, uh, put a link down in the description below is uh, UC's uh, suspension calculator if you look at the first post on that thread and use this calculator you can look at the various different uh, suspension uh, stiffness ratios and you'll be able to look at your damping rates there and you'll be able to fine tune them and he gives some really good tips in that first post, uh, first post as to basically what you should be doing with or what you should be aiming for when it comes to your dampers basically their quick, uh, critical operating windows and what kind of values you should be operating within and you can see it on his suspension calculator with the graphs basically the damper ratios and how well they should work for you uh, with the values and changes that you're making to your damper input so go check out that suspension calculator read through his first post get fiddling with your suspension and damper setups obviously if you do have any comments or questions uh, feel free to leave those down in the comments section below likewise support the channel support the video give it a thumbs up share it uh, obviously, if you've been enjoying the Insider's Guide series, consider subscribing to the channel. I very much appreciate that. But that's going to be pretty much it for this episode. Obviously, I'll leave that uh, suspension calculator link down in the description below. That would be very, very useful. Otherwise, hopefully you've enjoyed this one. Hopefully you found some useful information from it and you'll be able to go and adjust your dampers uh, a little bit more confidently than you have in the past. But otherwise, thank you very much for watching the episode, guys. Hopefully, I shall see you soon. But until the next one, thanks for watching. Take care.